Well, good morning, church. It is such a blessing to be able to be here again uh, in the baptismal waters. And what a celebration we had last week, and we get that privilege again this week. This week is a little bit unique for me and my family in the sense that we will be uh, actually witnessing the baptism of two of my kids both Elizabeth and Lydia, and it is such a privilege to do that. But I still want to make sure that you understand clearly what this is about. Now, I will say this as well, that for pastors and elders, it sometimes feels a little bit tricky with our our kids because you don't want to be pushy. You don't want to say too much. They already feel a weight of being the kids of a pastor or of an elder. And at the same time, uh, you just want to make sure as a hopefully a good dad and mom that you are having these conversations when it comes to where are you in your faith, your walk with Christ, and also understanding that baptism is in in large part like when you come to Christ in the first place. This is not something that you, you do need to understand what it is. You do need to understand what it's for and its place. But at the same time, no more than you got cleaned up to be saved do you make sure everything is in a row um, for your own personal life necessarily to be baptized. Now, you do need to examine to make sure that you have been born again already before you step into these waters, okay? Because there's nothing in this water at all. Although this water is really warm, if it could purify anyone, it probably could. Thank you, Rich. But I will tell you that it does not. There is nothing purifying about the water here. Simply that what this displays is an inner transformation that is beginning to make its way outward that has already occurred through the person and work of Jesus Christ. When my kids walk into this water, they are already professing to you that the Holy Spirit indwells them already. They are not being baptized into anything else except in association with their church. They're wanting you to see that they are indeed followers of Christ. And from this point forward, as you would anyone that enters into this water, that you would remember to pray for them and encourage them and also seek to disciple them when you have opportunity, but also hold them accountable. So again, knowing that many of you come from very many different backgrounds, I just want to reiterate one last time. The the baptism itself does not save a soul. Only Christ alone, by grace through loan, through faith alone can do so. Okay? But this is an act of obedience. He does command us to be baptized to show publicly that we are associated with him. So I would actually encourage you as well, if you've not been baptized and desire to know more about what it means, then please find me, find Brandon, find one of the elders, and we would love to discuss with you what it's all about. Okay, but first of all, I'm going to ask Elizabeth to come, and Elizabeth's going to share her testimony with you, and just so looking forward to this time. So, Elizabeth. I grew up in a Christian home with my father as the pastor of our church, so I consistently had the truth of the gospel poured into my whole life but I didn't realize my personal need for Jesus as the rescuer until I was about nine years old as I laid in bed and thought for the first time how truly evil and sinful I was born and how against the God of the universe I was in need of forgiveness and how I never wanted to be separated from the maker. By his grace, God gave me the desire and ability to ask him to save me as I knew he could and would by his loving life, sacrifice and resurrection That was when I first had the joy of being part of God's eternal family, his child, destined to grow to love him more. In the next few years of my life, um, it changed very quickly as we moved from Arkansas to family in Texas, and God has worked on me immensely, using difficult teenage years to help me know more deeply what it means to live for him. In the more recent few years of being shaken out of seeing this world as home, He has taught me more of the fullness of his forgiveness, love, and complete trustworthiness, and showing me more fully how truly I am in need of him, and making the reality of his grace more real to me, as I am thankful he will continue to work in me. Just as an artist works faithfully on his beloved project, or an author writes his character's arcs, he continues to make me more like him, the greatest character there could ever be. He works on me to be more thankful and loving, to remember and believe that his kingdom is coming, how much he truly loves me, and that that is my home. 
He has gifted me with the growing awe of his masterful storytelling and both thankfulness and perspective for my small part in it and helps me to want to honor him with all I do in my life, including obeying him here with baptism until he, the king, calls me or finally comes to bring us his beloved children home. So, Elizabeth, let me just simply ask you, do you know without a doubt that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Then it is my pleasure, and I love you so much, and I'm so thankful that I now get to call you sister in Christ. And so... By the power of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, and raised to walk in a brand new life. All right, next is Lydia. So, whereas Elizabeth is our lovely storyteller. Lydia is intensely practical. Lydia yesterday knew how important it was to be extra obedient on Saturday, knowing that her life was in my hands on Sunday. (laughs) You think I'm joking? She actually said that a few times. While we do know that that would be child abuse in every possible fashion, um, I am very happy to present to you Lydia so she can share with you a little bit of her story. I am here today to show my salvation in Christ. I know that baptism does not save me, and neither does anything else I could ever do without Christ. I've been raised in a Christian household my whole life. I was taught about Jesus and everything he sacrificed for us. But for a long while, I didn't realize how I really needed him in my life. I thought that me not biting my sibling when I was mad was was enough for me to be, quote unquote, good with God. I had a plan for my own life, and I assumed that's exactly how it would go, because I thought I could do it by myself. I was so wrong. When I was seven, we moved from Arkansas to Texas. We then moved in with my amazing grandparents. At some point when I was nine, I remember laying in my bed every night for about a week, not being able to go to sleep. I didn't know why, but I felt like something crucial was missing from my life, something that I couldn't feel myself by thinking I was good enough and better than everyone else. One night, I felt I was being drawn to God. I prayed to him and asked for help. After a while, I got up and talked to my parents. They prayed for me and read scripture with me. They helped me understand how broken I truly was and how much I needed Christ in my life. That's the night I accepted the Lord into my heart. I went to bed with an inexplicable peace. As I entered middle school, I started going to youth group. I still tried to do so much on my own because I was prideful. But God has used a few amazing youth pastors in my life, as well as some of the greatest friends anyone could ever have, to point me to him and to show me that I'm not as good as I thought I was. The Lord has worked through so many people and has used hard situations in life stages to show me how much I truly need him. Just like a sculptor, he is shaping me in his image, not my own. So here I am today to be baptized just as he is commanded. Well, Lydia, let me ask you, do you know without a doubt that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Then I baptize you, my sister, in Christ, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried like Christ was buried and raised like Christ was raised to walk in a brand new life. Let's pray. Our God, we thank you so much for the privilege of seeing the gospel on display in this way. God, we also thank you that there's no work of men, not even a good religious act as baptism that could possibly aid you in saving us. In fact, Lord, as we come to you, we desperately say only you can save because we are dead in our sins and trespasses. So God, I pray that that it would both be an encouragement to many who have already been baptized believers today as they see you continue to work in people's lives. I pray for those who are truly believers who, for whatever reason, have either through disobedience or just through neglect or just through questions, have not been baptized yet, that they would be encouraged to do so. 
And God, for those in the room that do not know you whatsoever, I pray that you would bring them to an understanding, maybe even through the picture of what it means to be buried under the water, to see them die to themselves and be raised to new life, that the living Christ can transform them regardless of where they are in age, what they've done in their past, that it's not about the strength of their faith or their ability. It's about the strength of God and his grace that can overcome any and all of our sin. And we are grateful for this. It's in Christ Jesus' name that we pray and we worship now. Amen.